So welcome to the Cape Computer Science Unit 1 specimen paper. This is the specimen paper that would be made active in 2022 onwards until the syllabus changes again. And the syllabus has changed up quite a bit in terms of the way that the questions are asked and not really the way the questions are asked but the amount of marks that the questions have. So I'm going to be working them out and then when I'm finished working them out we'll check the answers that the specimen paper has to see if there are any inconsistencies with my answers and their answers to see what they're looking for, what they were looking for and sometimes how answering the way that you think may not be the way that they're looking for. So check it out and I hope that you learn something. Alright, so let's go with the specimen paper for 20, well, for the new syllabus that started in 2022. 2022 would have been the first year of this examination. Alright, computer architecture is the first part, and we are going with draw a clearly labeled block diagram of a 2 to 1 multiplexer. 2 to 1 multiplexer would have a block in the middle. You'll name this block multiplexer. And you have two input lines. This will be input 0 and input 1 and this output here will be normally let's put the output as Q and then your selection lines will be S0. So based on whatever your selection switches are set at, well the, the selection switches set at, it will determine which input will go through. So if this selection is at set at 0, it will choose input 0. If this selection is set at 1, it will choose input 1. That is standard multiplexer in there. Now we want to construct a truth table for the following circuit as a combination of basic logic gates. Alright, this is the sum of products. Well, no, so not sum of products, sorry. Usually you start from the, uh, the last gate that you have, which is a uh, AND gate, and then work your way back. This is a uh, OR gate, this is a uh, OR gate, this is a uh, NOT gate, and a NOT gate. So definitely we're going to have the equation of, the equation is going to be and which is A, no, yeah, you have A and B and C and D, what do you guess C and D from? Oh, they have E and F, I, I guess you had to answer questions about them, no? Oh, uh -huh. C would be the not A, okay, why did they put C, D and E? Eh, it doesn't matter. Alright, so our equation is going to look like um not a and b right that will deal with this part here this this a that running across like this and then this is the and b that's going to jump up there all right or a not b all right so the output of the two o's will be two the two and sorry will meet each other at this or all right good so now our truth table we could go a b A will be 0, 0, then you have 0, 1, then you have 1, 0, and 1, 1, right? Um, those are your standard inputs when you have two possible inputs. And let's work out the two parts of the equation now. The two parts of the equation would be not A and B as the first one. Um, I'll work it all piece by piece just to make sure that everything is clear as to why it's what. So we'll go with the not A. Not A will be 1, 1, 0, 0. Then we have whatever the not B is, which will be 1, 0, 1, 0. All right, now we could go with the parts that we want to work out. Not A um, and B. So we're dealing with not A here and B. The end of that 0 and 1. 0, 1 and 1 is 1. 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. Then we have the next one which is A and not B. So we take a normal A and it's and not B. That's 0 and 1, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0 and... No, 1 and 1, 1 and 1. Okay. 0 and 1, right? 0 and 0, 1 and 1 is 1, and 1 and 0 is 0, right? Now we have to or this, so our end product, which in this case they call in Z, which is not A, 
B plus A not B. Apparently this is called Z to them. Apparently this is called the not A is called a C. The not B is called a D. The output of the first A not B is called E. The fact that they put the letters in the diagram, I just put it in the table just because I don't know if they're marking it based on the letters or be it just if they see a calculation. Anyhow, so we're doing the or now. Zero or zero is zero. One or zero is one. One. Right. This is also known as an exclusive or um, or XO. But they didn't ask that. But you could see it because an exclusive or would only have ones as the output if you have a, a one and a zero. Cool. Consider the following floating point representation a one bit sign, three bit exponent, and five bit matrix. Alright, so we could pull this out and be like, okay, zero means it's positive. Um, the exponent is zero one one, and the matrix is one one. No, so one zero one zero one one zero. Alright. So we know for sure that the number is Z tells us that it's positive. The 0, 1, 1 tells us the exponent is 3. And now the mantis is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So to convert that, we're going to move the decimal point, replace this to the right. So it will be 1, 2, 3. So you're going to get 1, or 1, 1.10. 0. And now we have to convert that one on one point one zero this one this is four plus one to give you five and this is a half which is point five so you're supposed to get five point five positive five point five somehow I think I saw this question somewhere already probably asked that a few times well okay that is the first question let's go and check their answers and see if we line up and if there are any inconsistencies or anything that we have to query about it unit one people two key and mark scheme right click all right so the mark scheme is here which is the good thing about the specimen paper because they will show you what they would have given the marks for this is what the normal mark scheme would look like and teachers will have to use this as their guide to determine if the children get any marks or not so let's see what we have this is what they have okay so they have a four to one multiplexer here's what they're looking for they're looking for input zero do we have input zero yes we have i zero input one one mark selection line one mark um output one and block diagram looks okay overall i really don't know what okay overall means like how do you gauge what okay overall is but we will take it yeah so that'll be five marks there no problems with the um get off this answer. Second answer, oh yeah, as I suspected, they want they probably would have wanted you to put the letters inside. So they have A, B, C, D, E, F, and Z. And in my table, I put the actual equation for each calculation. So I don't know, you might want to pay attention to the letters that they have there and, and use that as the headings of your table. I did put them in and circle them. So but either way, if you did it with the um I can't see them giving it wrong if you did it by showing the, um, the actual calculation that took place. So they have two marks for input and then one mark each for output. Seven marks? Wow. No, five output. Two marks, input, one mark each. I don't know. I don't understand what the marks scheme mean, but five, six, seven. Two marks input for all the inputs for A and B. Then one mark each. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. Five, five. Seven marks. You would have gotten it correct. All right, now the sign bit um, mantis. Uh, we have the zero, which is positive. Good. We have the mantis, and we have the exponent. We resolve the exponent to three. We move the decimal point three places to the right. Then we get one on one point one, and then get down to five point five. All right, cool. No problems with that. Okay. So this is our watered down question of what they would have normally had. Normally, the, the, you would have a question about a decoder. Maybe you might have another logic gate question. You might have some kind of thing in the um, in the old syllabus, but the new syllabus doesn't do that. So it's really um, a little more straightforward. But if you don't know what you're doing, of course, you could just lose marks wild, wildly. 
All right, so let's go on now to the next part. So question two is normally a question about architecture, ROM, RAM, cache, registers, that kind of stuff. So let's see what we have here. Differentiate between the following items as they pertain to computer systems. Okay, ROM. ROM is permanent storage used to start up. No, used to hold the startup instructions for a computer. Used to hold the startup instructions for a computer. RAM is the temporary memory store used to hold currently running programs. Yeah, that sounds good there. Then there's PROM and EPROM. EPROM is Erasable Programmable Read Only Memory that can be erased by how do they erase it with um, magnetic light or UV light? UV light then reprogram um, next one is electrical erasable can be erased by using an electrical signal then reprogrammed it's two marks but I I just have a feeling that when they give you these plenty lines they're looking for something I don't know what they're looking for but yeah. alright next is state what is meant by the instruction set of a central processing CPU um, that is the um, total number of commands that the um, CPU can process. All these extra lines are for example, move, jump, add, sub. There's only one mark, but I really don't want to risk not getting any mark. So try to, don't risk it, don't risk it. You don't want to risk it. You don't want to. All right, next, briefly describe two types of instructions that are typically included. Oh, well, that, that went well. I described them in the previous answer. So, no, well, I described it, I gave examples of them. There are, um, there are, ooh, what's the term for it? Well, I forget the term. Mm. Jump, add, subtract. It's not update. Control or branch. Control slash branch. Um, control trust branch. Um, allows the program to execute command that use selection or loops All right, that's controller branch and next one is what by it's data manipulation and oh, what, what are the words I know like add subtract those are data manipulation commands and the is assignment Controller branch. I think it's assignment. Anybody want to help me here? I'm drawing a blank. We have to go to my notes.
Arithmetic and logic, right? That's it there. Yeah. Arithmetic and logic. Thanks, Gabby. Logic. Right. Allows the CPU to perform mathematical and logical calculations. Good. Perfect. Alright, part C. Explain how to fetch the code execute cycle works in relation to the execution of an instruction by the CPU. Okay, so fetch will get fetch gets the instruction from main memory into the CPU. Fetch is the CU, right? The control unit gets the instruction from main memory into the CPU. The code is the CU um, breaks down the instruction into the opcode and the operand. and sends it to the ELU and executes the ALU carries out the operation and stores it in a register. Yeah, that should be good enough for six marks there. Yeah? We'll take that. We'll take that. All right, now let's compare and see what they said. What did they say? They said for part one, RAM and RAM. RAM is read only. RAM dot dot dot. What? Somebody was asleep when they were doing this. I don't know. They have the answer, RAM is read only, RAM dot dot dot. I guess they mean RAM is not read only. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't always trust the um the exam the um specimen paper answers because I don't know, there is this trend of specimen paper answers being wrong from CSEC IT all the way up. All kind of other subjects, specimen papers answers be wrong all the time. And I don't know, this just compounds the issue. Anyhow, so EEPROM is um, erased by ultraviolet light and EEPROM is erased by electricity. All right, notice how they give you four lines to write on and their answer sheet just has two lines. This is, this is why sometimes it's better to just get to the point or have the keywords that they want because really and truly what you're trying to do is just give them the keywords because they are marking based on keywords. Um, B part one. The operation of a CPU is determined by the instructions it executes. The collection of different instructions that the CPU can execute is referred to the CPU's instruction set. Why is the first sentence there? Why did they write the operation of a CPU determined by the instructions it executes? They ask, state what is meant by instruction set of a central processing unit. Um, that first answer I find that shaky. The second answer is the better one. You set up different instructions that the CPU could execute, and I gave some examples. Yeah, that's cool. Um, next is right. There's controller branch, data storage, or arithmetic, and what they have data processing, which is instructions that perform arithmetic addition, subtraction, etc., and logic operations, etc. Okay, data processing they call it. Arithmetic and logic, same thing. Then there's data storage, instructions that store data in memory to receive them. Then there's data movement, which is instructions to input data from move, then control, instructions that test conditions and branch to other conditions. All right, cool. So we good there. Fetch instruction is obtained from physical memory and center register. Fetch the CPU, fetches the instruction from main memory into the CPU. Decode, determine what the instruction is, determine the operands. All right, I have upcode and operands. Execute, perform the operation and store the results as necessary. The ALU carries out the operation and stores it in a register. All right, cool, six marks. Okay, good. That's what you want. <clears throat> so once you know your stuff, you could probably blaze through these questions really fast because they're really short. They're really short now. Okay, 
section B. Right, so of course, thanks for watching. You made it to the end. If you're looking for Cape IT classes that you want me to teach, you could check us out at education.makeitsimplett.com and you will see all the different packages that we have for Cape IT classes. And of course, you could always come back to this YouTube channel and there'll always be free videos here to explain different things to you. But if you want dedicated classes that will explain certain things to you and make sure you understand the syllabus inside out, then check us out education.makeitsimplett.com You'll see Cape IT and we have a various um, set of classes from crash courses all the way down to full-on classes with assignments and IA assistance and paper three assistance. So you can check that out, um, makeitsimplett.com